there's growing sensitivity around nutrients and their effects on New Zealand's waterways. The first step in addressing concerns is to gather information to guide management and mitigation options. Environment Southland and Southland Fish and Game are two organisations working in this area. They've been involved in a major monitoring program of Southland estuaries since 2001. Zane Moss explains why this work is so important. Uh, estuaries obviously have their own sort of intrinsic worth, if you like, as an ecosystem, but their influence extends well beyond their sort of physical boundaries. They're a really important breeding ground for a whole host of, of native fish species. Uh, probably one of the most significant is smelt, which is quite a small native fish, but they rely on the estuary and migrate up through our lower river systems to spawn uh, in the millions, literally. And their bodies, uh, both when they're alive and, and once they die after, the, after they spawn, uh, are eaten by a whole host of different bird species and different fish species. So that contribution of nutrient from those fish, which is sort of harvested from the estuary, uh, is then transferred to that lower river system, feeds a whole host of things such as eels as well, uh, which are obviously an important species for, for iwi, uh, but also commercially, short finned eel fishery uh, is fairly reliant on the nutrient from smelt, which is harvested from the estuary. So there's a link between the estuaries and a whole host of other species. For the whole of Southland, there's about seven or eight estuaries where the monitoring has been taking place and it's been sort of staggered as you go through. This one's probably got the most amount of data and we've done the most work so here it goes from about 2001 up to date. We know that the two main issues are sediment, as in there's too much sediment and too much nutrients, predominantly nitrogen, but there's, there's probably phosphorus associated with that too, or the sediment. And the, the key thing as well is that those two things aren't separate things, they're actually interrelated as well. So when they get to estuaries, they actually work together to do different things and upset processes and have all sorts of changes. So it's quite key that you can't just manage one thing and hope everything's going to be okay, you have to manage both. And that's the sort of situation we are. Um, and it's not unique to here. I mean, in New Zealand, estuaries across the country are experiencing similar problems. We are moving into a new phase, which is really about trying to have more targeted questions answered via our monitoring and investigations to really help in the sense of managing a catchment. The samples that we've taken have been these fine scale monitoring sites, which is basically looking in focus at some specifics of sites. So we're trying to understand what's in the sediment and um, some of the biology too. We send these off to Hills Laboratories and we look at what's in the sediment in the sense of how big is the grain sites, because that tells us how much mud there is, which is quite an important factor. Then also we'll have a look at how much nutrients are in this and what are the metals in that, because that gives us an idea of toxicants or contaminants. And there's another component where we take cores and we basically gather a whole bunch of sediment and we wash it out through a fine mesh and that retains all the little critters that are living in the sediment. So what you're looking at here is um, a map of Mac gravel cover um, for New River Estuary. And this scale here, as you're coming down in that scale, you're seeing an increase in the density of macroalgae. So when you've got a 100%, that's basically everything's macroalgae. So as you can see here, we've got a few patches here of macroalgal cover um, in 2007. But as we fast forward to 2013, you can see here that these areas have actually increased. And those are actually some rather dramatic increases in some of those areas of that macroalgae and it seems to be, the trend seems to be that it's getting more. So what we have on here is uh, seagrass, um, which is a species that um, roots into the sediment and it's quite a beneficial plant for juvenile stages of a lot of fish species. And so this is sort of what would be a beneficial habitat and it's something we want to retain. Unfortunately, we're losing that and the monitoring has highlighted this quite dramatic loss in seagrass over the last 10 years or so. And at the same time, we've had this increase in this nuisance seaweed. Um, and there's three main species. Two are green algae, and the other one is uh, brown algae. And what we can see here is um, what's called um, Entromorpha intestinalis, which is this green algae that's quite long and stringy. And this, this stuff just has a, a bonanza with, with the nutrients. And uh, in the summer, when there's high temperatures, it, it takes off, as does this other green seaweed, which is called um, Entromorpha lactuca, also known as sea lettuce, and um, is eaten in some places around the world. Um, and that takes off too. 
And then the third one is this red algae, which is called Gracilaria chilensis, which is a really good sediment trap. Um, and in combination, all these things proliferate or bloom, um, especially when you get those high temperatures and, uh, and it's, the, it's the perfect conditions for them to do so. And it looks something like this when the algae starts to rot down a bit. The end result we don't exactly know, but what we're talking about is the very systems that are needed for the functioning of estuaries. And as you undermine those or completely lose elements or, or partially lose elements of those, those are the supporting systems for these benefits that we gain from them in the sense of the food that we get from them, some shellfish, fish, um, potentially fisheries. There's also things like the waste assimilation that, that uh, naturally estuaries do for us for a whole catchment and so there's a huge implications in that in losing those systems what does that mean to a catchment as a whole and the people that are associated with estuaries and, and not just estuaries but what does that also mean to the coastal space further out it's a challenge nationwide obviously not just within southland uh, as farming increases in intensification obviously the challenges of managing the nutrient loss from that uh, are ever increasing, changing practices, um, wintering is a real issue in Southland in terms of losses of sediment and nutrient from wintering systems. So that's probably one of the areas that we'll have to look to change over time. Uh, perhaps a move to more indoor uh, wintering systems, um, less fodder crop use, which is a, a real loss of sediment from that. Um, and just looking at all of those practices cumulatively to try and improve wherever we can um, and perhaps look at whole system losses to try and make those changes over time. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.